Hello and welcome back to Direct Capital Channel and welcome to today's update. I'm going to be focusing on Bitcoin's price action relative to each of its halvings and we're going to be focusing on the pre-halving retraces that of course happen prior to each of the halvings. We're going to be comparing these pre-halving retraces because a lot of you guys have been asking me about the halving in the comments down below. What is Bitcoin going to be doing? Going into the halving it's only around 20 days away so it's really fast approaching. It is a topic that is widely searched on Google Trends. If you just look at Google Trends for the term Bitcoin halving, you'll see that the Bitcoin halving search term is at an all-time high in Google Trends. So definitely there is a lot of interest in the Bitcoin halving. And the thing we need to bear in mind is how is the Bitcoin halving going to affect Bitcoin's price? And of course, if you've been following me for a long time, I've covered this uh, topic quite a few times in the past. We know that exponential rallies in Bitcoin's price are quite likely after the halving. But leading up to the halving, we tend to see some turbulence in Bitcoin's price action. At the same time, it is understandable that we are living in unprecedented times and Bitcoin's crash right over here is an unprecedented feat if we look at the technical price action for Bitcoin. So without further ado, let's Let's dive straight into the video. Right over here, the market structure is the triangular market structure. We have this triangle painting itself on Bitcoin's price action on the weekly time frame. The 7,200 level is a very key resistance area for Bitcoin right now. And for six weeks in a row, we haven't been able to penetrate this resistance. Of course, the halving is around here, so not too long before we see the halving. But we need to bear in mind, what is Bitcoin going to be doing as it approaches the halving? And we need to look at previous halvings or at least previous price action relative to the halvings. And let's do that right here, right now with Bitcoin halving number one. Here is halving number one in November 2012. And we saw a peak of $15, $15.51 Prior to the halving, this was around 100 days before halving one. And after that 50% retracement, we saw a bounce and then we just really meandered into the halving and even beyond it for a while, for a few months before actually seeing exponential movement towards the upside into a new all time high. So this sort of movement that we're seeing prior to the halving, uh, prior to halving one, doesn't deviate too much from what we've been seeing in Bitcoin's price action at the moment. We've just been seeing consolidation at highs here. So it isn't out of the ordinary that we don't see much movement going into the halving. And this is evident right over here. Of course, a pre-halving retrace occurs, followed by consolidation, and only after the halving, weeks, weeks after the halving, we see a move towards the upside. This is the case with Bitcoin halving number one. Let's have a look at Bitcoin halving number two, where actually this pre-halving retrace obviously occurs prior to the halving, but it also carries on into and past the halving. So this was the peak of $794 for Bitcoin's price action. It retraced 38%, 28 days prior to the halving. So we're already seeing quite a bit of difference there. We see a 50% prior to the halving one and a 38% pre-halving retracement for halving two. It happened 100 days before halving one and 28 days before halving two. So try to keep these numbers in mind when bearing in mind what we're going to be covering for pre-halving three. But in any case, a pre-halving retrace going into and beyond the halving for halving two was what we saw in the past. Consolidation, for a few weeks before we saw movement towards the upside. It wasn't a smooth rally. We have to bear in mind that dips, strong corrections along the way up to new all time highs are very much possible. So don't get shaken out after the halving. But in any case, when we're looking at halving two, we have to bear in mind that we actually saw a lot of consolidation prior to halving two as well. But this consolidation happened before that initial, or at least that pump before halving two, before we saw that retrace. So that consolidation prior to halving two happened before that pump. And in halving one, we actually saw consolidation afterwards. Of course, we also saw consolidation uh, leading into the halving as well. So consolidation isn't uh, out of the ordinary when we're considering pre-halving price action. 
it, we had consolidation here prior to halving one and immediately prior to the halving, halving one as well. So balancing all of these things in mind about pre-halving one and pre-halving two, what can we say about pre-halving three? What can we glean? from the price action moving into the halving and what could we potentially try to expect based on previous price tendencies in this unprecedented climate nonetheless. Well, before we dive into that, I am hosting a giveaway for my risk management course. It is $97 usually, and I am giving away this course for free to five people. Five people will be able to pick this course up for free. It is a five-star rated course. And if you'd like to learn more about this course, how to time your exposure to altcoins for maximum profitability, when to de-risk, when to risk on, how to maximize your profits by trading altcoins and how to preserve your capital because trading is all about capital preservation and maximizing the efficiency of your portfolio so as to maximize that profitability. But we need to time these moments and know when to risk on and risk off when it comes to altcoin exposure and position allocation in these higher risk digital assets that altcoins are. So this is the whole list of what you guys can expect in my risk management course, and it is a fantastic course. This course has been rated five stars, and I'm really proud of that because that's the only thing that I'm going for. I'm only going to be producing quality content for you guys because I won't produce content if I don't feel it'll be 100% up to scratch, which is why sometimes I won't post on Twitter and sometimes I won't post a video on YouTube because if I'm not feeling 100%, then I don't wanna give you guys any less than that. So here is why I'm really proud of the risk management course because this is my full skill set on display, my heart and soul into this cryptocurrency risk management. And you guys can get it for free today. Thanks to eToro who are sponsoring this giveaway, the number one social trading app for crypto, where you guys can copy some of the most profitable traders on the platform, as well as discuss and share ideas. And of course, trade cryptocurrencies, which is something that we've come to know and love so dearly. So feel free to visit the eToro link in the description down below below to claim your free risk management course. This giveaway is only for US residents at the moment, but feel free to visit the eToro link in the description down below, create an account via the link, deposit $50 to your new eToro account, make a $50 purchase of any of the cryptos there and just DM me on Twitter with the verification of this transaction and you'll receive a 100% discount code for your free risk management course. But I am giving away only five courses and sometime next week I am going to announce officially the winners but at the moment two people have already claimed their giveaway their free risk management course so only three slots available only three more people will be able to get their risk management course for free by signing up and following the eToro instructions mentioned earlier so make the most of this offer because it isn't going to be around for much longer that being said let's dive right into the video Pre-halving retrace number three. This is the May 2020 halving that we've been waiting for in strong anticipation. And what we need to bear in mind is that this pre-halving retrace actually happened 300 days, over 300 days prior to the halving. Looking back, of course, this is a 72%, 72.5% retracement, which goes a bit against the grain of what we've seen in prior halvings. One of the pre-halving retraces was 38%, one of them was 50%, and now we're seeing 72%, and of course this ties in with the unprecedented circumstances that we're seeing at the moment. We've never seen a pre-halving retrace that has happened 300 days prior to the halving, but at the same time, we tend to see 50% retracements prior to halvings anyway because 50% retracements prior to the halving happen, and we got that right over here. And if we cycle to the past halvings, we got that over here as well. This was a first major correction in a new bull market, which was around 40% over here prior to halving one, and here prior to halving two. This was also around 40%, a 40% retracement following the initial rally in the new bull market, followed by that first initial correction. So these 40% rallies, or at least 40% corrections are very likely and they have happened in the past prior to the halving. And this is exactly what this was, which is why this recovery right over here was going to be that new bull market, that new continuation that could have led to up to 14,000 or 17,000 
prior to the halving and that if price continued and followed through on historical tendencies, that's what we would have seen if it weren't for unprecedented circumstances. I don't want to blame unprecedented circumstances, but this is a factor that we really need to consider because, because up until that point, we really saw things playing out perfectly, which is why we need to bear this in mind in our analysis, because if we just consider this top, it happened 90 days before the halving, and it was a retracement of 63%. And if we cycle to Bitcoin halving number one, 50% was a pre-halving retrace, 100 days before the halving. 91 days before the halving isn't too out of the ordinary. But again, we have to bear in mind that this is where we saw that Black Swan event take place. And of course, it ties in with this Black Diagonal resistance, which has become solidified by this rejection right over here in a very pivotal moment. So yes, I am suggesting to you guys that if it weren't for that event, we might have seen continuation in what was really setting itself up for trend continuation in that bull market that started and originated from this ranging period, saw that first initial rally, the first major bull market correction, followed by trend continuations, which was unfortunately cut short but now we just have to live with what has happened and we need to try and adapt going forward. So here are the takeaways all in one. There is going to be limited upside on this rally for Bitcoin, whether this is a rejection from 7,250 or it's a rejection from the mid 7,000s or even up to 8,000. We have limited runway for Bitcoin going into the halving and we tend to see turbulence around this point because many people are going to buy the hype and sell the news. But this isn't a event that you can buy the hype and sell the news for because this is a fundamental change in Bitcoin's protocol and many people don't understand that because this is a fundamental shift in how miners get rewarded for mining blocks on the Bitcoin blockchain. It's a fundamental shift that we need to bear in mind which will enhance the value of Bitcoin because scarcity is promoted by a deflationary pre-programmed halving event. So heading into the halving, limited upside followed by consolidation or even significant downside. And by significant downside, I mean a major low. Something that I've been talking about over the past few weeks, another major low for Bitcoin going into the 5,000s, maybe even upper 4,000s. And this ties in with the on-chain analytics because if we take a look at all the halvings that have happened so far, if we look at the unrealized profit and loss of the network, so this ties in with minor capitulation and how profitable is the Bitcoin protocol, the Bitcoin network, is it in a state of loss or is it in a state of profit? And if we look at these halvings, we'll notice that the state of the network is in a temporary moment of loss. And right over here, the state of the network is in a state of loss heading into the halving, but this is only temporary and these pullbacks in this unrealized profit and loss tie in with the pullbacks in Bitcoin's price action. They tie in with Bitcoin price pullbacks. So no doubt, even though we are in a period of somewhere between capitulation and hope and fear for miners at the moment, I am watching for that sort of retrace heading into the halving like we've seen in the past before. And should we get these retraces, which is quite likely, it's also quite likely that we'll see further minor capitulation, something I've been speaking about in the previous videos. But at the same time, this minor capitulation isn't going to be as sharp as this time, or this time, or even this and this time. So we have to bear in mind that we might see a higher low bearing that minor capitulation in mind. So once we see a retrace heading into the halving in terms of how the network is in a state of profit or not, we should see a higher low form and this will tie in with a higher low and another major low, but a higher low nonetheless for Bitcoin's price. So the Bitcoin halving a bullish event in the short term, not necessarily so, especially since a lot of retracement and a lot of volatility could be happening around that time and a few weeks afterwards. But we have to bear in mind, we have to stay patient and keep the longer view, the longer term perspective, the macro perspective that after the halving, Bitcoin will most likely do very well 
and rally exponentially to new all-time highs, especially once we get a grip on this unprecedented circumstance and times that we are currently living in. In any case, that's about it for today's video. If you enjoyed the video, please consider dropping a like. Of course, comment in the comments down below if you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions about pre-halving, number three, what Bitcoin could be doing going forward. Of course, feel free to subscribe for more videos like this in the future. I'm Rekt Capital and I'll speak to you in the next one. Speak soon.